how to implement convolution in real time by camera. In this lecture, we are going to apply 2D image convolution to every frame obtained from camera. We will run the code, detect edge of ourselves by Sobel filter and convolution operation, find the biggest contour, draw bounding box around object on original RGB video stream and give label to this bounding box. Pay attention! To implement this activity, you need to have a very simple background, like this one. If our background is complex, there will be a lot of objects and their edges. In this case, to choose the needed object, more advanced algorithm is needed. Anyway, we are going to implement simple 2D image convolution in real time to sense this operation and witness useful results. Hi everyone, my name is Valentun Sichkar. Let's get started. Learning objectives for this activity are as following. You will be able to initialize special TensorFlow 2D convolutional class with predefined Sobel filter, implement 2D convolution by initialized TensorFlow class and in real time, visualize detected edge of the object in real time, Draw bounding box and label around detected object. Calculate time needed to apply to the convolution on a single frame. We will also experiment and apply to the image convolution not only by camera, but additionally on video file. We will detect the biggest found contour, draw bounding box and print label around detected object. Let's begin. Here are two options – clone or download the code file, or simply code while watching. Find the link in the description. Pause video and come back when you are ready. We will code in PyCharm. However, by the link you will find the code in Jupyter Notebook. Anyway, they are 99% the same. Let's jump to the programming environment. This is file convolution in real time Py, and we are going to implement 2D image convolution in real time. Algorithm is as following. Firstly, we set up one channeled Sobel filter for edge detection. Next, we prepare OpenCV windows to show results in. Then, we read frames one by one from camera, initialize 2D convolutional layer by the help of TensorFlow and feed every captured frame into initialized 2D convolutional layer. On every output from 2D convolutional layer, we detect the biggest found contour and draw bounding box with label around this biggest contour but on original RGB frame. Finally, we cut detected object and show all results in separate OpenCV windows. We also calculate VPS rate used to process every single frames. As a result, we will get OpenCV windows that will show us 2D convolution in real time. Object edges obtained by 2D convolution and Sobel filter. Time spent to implement 2D convolution for every frame. And bounding box around object that will be identified by the help of found edge. Let's go through the code. Here we import minimum needed libraries. NumPy library to process arrays, OpenCV library to process input video stream and to show windows with results, TensorFlow library to get access to convolutional layer class. Finally, we import timer to calculate time spent for two-dimensional image convolution. In the first block, there are additional settings that can be applied in case of CUDA and TensorFlow issues when GPU is used instead of CPU. The possible issues might look like following. To apply these settings, uncomment these lines. Find also more details and more examples of the possible solutions by these two links. 
Join these lines before opening them in browser window. They are separated here in order to fit the screen size. One more option to overcome possible CUDA and TensorFlow issues is to switch to CPU environment instead of GPU. In the next block, we set up Sobel filter by NumPy function and P array, specifying exact numbers along three rows and three columns. In this block, we initialize OpenCV windows. We give them names and specify that they are resizable by the second argument. It means that window can be resized while it is opened. Pay attention on the names. By these names, we will access appropriate window and pass NumPy arrays to be displayed. In the next block, we start to read frames from camera. To access camera, we initialize video capture object and specify index of the camera. It can be built in one or external one. It is also possible to access video file instead of video stream from camera. In this case, specify path to the video file, uncomment this line of the code and comment line to access camera. Next, we prepare variables for spatial dimensions of the captured frames. Right now, we assign to them none and we will initialize them later inside while loop when we capture the very first frame. After that, we get version of OpenCV being installed because different versions process contours in different way. We will see it in a few moments. We also define NumPy array to be as image in which we will put the text with processing time spent for 2D convolution and which we will pass to one of the prepared OpenCV window. To initialize it, we create black image. We will update it in a few moments. Here, we define variable to count frames and start timer by getting current time point in seconds. By the help of this while loop, we catch frames one by one from camera. We do it by applying method read to created CV2 video capture object. It returns two variables, result of capturing true or false, and frame itself in form of NumPy array. Order of channels for the captured frames will be BGR. If we read video file instead of video stream from camera, we use this condition to break the loop when we read all frames from the file. In this block, we get special dimensions of the frame for the first time when they are still none. And we do it only one time because next frames will have the same dimensions. At the same time, when we get frames spatial dimension, we initialize 2D convolutional layer by TensorFlow for gray input and one channeled Sobel filter. We access 2D convolutional layer by this structure. As arguments, we pass following. Number of filters that we pass to argument filters and set it as one. Filters spatial dimension that we pass to argument kernel size and set height and width according to our earlier predefined Sobel filter. Step for convolution that we pass to argument strides and set it as one. Zero valued pet frame we set by this argument and pass to it keyword same, that means the same dimension of the output feature map as input image. The needed thickness of the pet frame will be calculated automatically. We also set here activation function as rectified linear unit that will be applied to all values inside output feature map. In other words, by this activation function, all negative values inside NumPy array of the output feature map will be replaced by zeros. In the next argument, input shape, we pass shape of the input gray frame, height, width, and number of channels. For the next argument, use bias, we pass false 
in order not to use bias because by default bias is true. Last argument kernel initializer we used to pass our predefined Sobel filter. Values of our Sobel filter are weights by which convolution will be computed. We use this structure to pass NumPy array of the Sobel filter inside 2D convolutional layer. If we don't use this argument, then weights, in other words, filters values, will be set randomly. We will keep our initialized 2D convolutional layer in this variable. We also initialize it only one time from the very beginning when we know spatial dimensions of the frames. Find detailed explanation and more examples of usage TensorFlow to deconvolutional layer class in the following lecture. In the next block, we implement to deconvolution to the currently caught frame. But firstly, we convert frame from BGR to gray color space by the help of OpenCV function CVT color, specifying as first argument current BGR frame and needed type of conversion from BGR to gray. We also reshape our gray frame in order to fit it into 2D convolutional layer. We give it explicitly defined dimension for channels and dimension that is responsible for number of filters. Result we save into new variable. Finally, we pass it through initialized TensorFlow layer. While implementing 2D convolution, we calculate spent time by getting start point and end point in seconds. Difference between these two points will be spent time for 2D convolution and for a single frame. Next, we slice from the output just feature map. We also convert obtained TensorFlow tensor into NumPy array. Result we save into the same variable, updating it. As you remember, we set activation function as rectified linear unit. That's why we don't have negative values in the output feature map. However, we still might have values that are bigger than 255. That's why here, by the help of NumPy function clip, we replace all values that are bigger than 255 by 255. Result we save into the same NumPy array, updating it. Find detailed explanation and more examples of usage TensorFlow to deconvolutional layer class in the following lecture. In the next block, we find the biggest contour. But firstly, let's consider an option to apply morphological filter. We do it by the help of OpenCV function here. This filter helps to make edges thicker by increasing areas of foreground pixels. Find more details and examples by the links at the end of this code file. Now we are going to keep an option when this filter is not applied. Later you can experiment and try to apply this filter and compare the results when filter is not applied. To apply it, uncomment this line and comment this line. Next, and by the help of OpenCV function CV2 find contours, we get list of found objects contours in form of NumPy arrays. Contours inside these NumPy arrays represented as points coordinates. Before we can apply this function, we check which version of OpenCV is installed because different versions return different number of parameters. If it is third version, then function returns following parameters, modified image, list that includes found contours and hierarchy. If it is fourth version, then function returns only found contours and hierarchy. We are interested only in contours. After we get all found contours, we sort them according to the size of contour area, from biggest to smallest. Now, this list includes NumPy arrays of the contours coordinates, where the first one is the biggest one. In the next block, we check if any contour was found inside current processed frame, and we extract coordinates of approximate rectangle around the biggest contour by OpenCV function CV2 bounding rect. 
We pass to this function first contour from the list that is the biggest one. And we get left upper point x min y min as well as rectangle width and height. To draw this rectangle, we use OpenCV function CV2 rectangle, passing current BGR frame because we want to draw a rectangle on the initial frame that is without any processing. We also pass left upper point and right bottom point. Here we specify color of the rectangle line and its thickness. Next, we prepare label and draw this label slightly above rectangle. We do it by OpenCV function CV2 put text, passing as first argument current BGR frame, label, start point to type the text, font style, font scale, font color, and type of the line. Later, you can experiment and change these arguments to find better options for your own project. In the next block, we cut detected fragment from currently caught frame. Our frame is in form of NumPy array. That's why we just slice needed elements from it. From upper row to the bottom row and from left column to the right column. We also cut fragment a little bit deeper by 10% of its height and width. We do it in order to leave only object without colored frame. As a result, we have NumPy array with our object only. In this block, after we obtained the results, we show them in prepared OpenCV windows. First window we show is a current view from camera. We apply function CV2 in show, specifying name of the prepared window and current captured frame. Pay attention, we need to pass frame with BGR order of channels. Every time we capture next frame, the window will be updated and visualize new frame. In the next two windows, we show output from 2D convolution and cut fragment of the detected object that was found by the biggest contour. After that, we prepare NumPy array with image. On this image, we will type text with results. Firstly, we fill image with different color. We want this color to be as background of our image. Consequently, we apply to every channel of the NumPy array appropriate number. We access channels one by one and assign to every element of appropriate channel following pixels values. Now, this array consists of channels that have needed pixels values. As OpenCV window needs BGR order of channels, then first channel in our NumPy array is blue and last is red. At every new iteration, or in other words, every time we capture next frame, this NumPy array will be updated and image will be filled again with this color. After NumPy array with image is ready, we draw on this image text with obtained results for current frame. We do it by OpenCV function CV2 put text, passing as first argument image itself. Then we specify label we want to show. Next argument is a start point to type the text, height and width. Following arguments are font style, font color, that is white, thickness and type of the line. Later you can experiment and change these arguments to find better options for your own project. We also add to the same NumPy array with image text with calculated time spent for 2D convolution. The differences are in the text to be added, start points to type the text, font scale and thickness. After all needed information is added to the image, we show it in this OpenCV window. As we already discussed, every new frame, this information will be updated and typed again. Next, if no contour is found, we show window with current view from camera. And in all other OpenCV windows, we show blank images of this color and add text with this information. In this block, we calculate FPS rate. First of all, we increase counter. 
This counter will collect number of frames that are already captured and processed. Next, we get current time point and compare it with previous time point. If the difference reached 1 second, then we print number of frames processed during 1 second. After that, we update counter for frames and get new time point to start new calculation of FPS rate from. Here we break the while loop if letter Q is pressed. Outside the loop we release video capture object and destroy all opened OpenCV windows. As usual, at the end you can find some useful comments. Join these lines before opening this link in browser window. It is separated here in order to fit the screen size. Let's run the code. We can see window with the current view from camera and bounding box around biggest found contour. Next window with output from 2D convolution that shows us detected object edges. And window with cut fragment that is object itself. All windows are updated in real time. Pay attention on FPS rate. It depends on the capacity of machine you use. Ok, let's press Q to stop the loop. Ok, let's now apply 2D convolution, but now for video file. Uncomment this line of the code and comment this line. You can also change label here. And hide some of the windows by commenting these lines. Let's run the code. We can see window with bounding box around the biggest found contour and window with detected edges. In this lecture you obtained new skills. We successfully initialized special TensorFlow 2D convolutional class with predefined Sobel filter. You are able now to initialize 2D convolutional class not with random numbers, but with needed filter values. We also implemented 2D convolution in real time. You are able now to apply 2D convolution not only to a single image, but also to a sequence of the frames obtained from camera. To visualize results after applying 2D convolution, we showed separate OpenCV window with detected edges. You are able now to visualize output from 2D convolution in real time. You are also able now to find contour of the object, draw bounding box with label around this object and show separate OpenCV window with current view from camera and applied results. Finally, we computed spent time for 2D image convolution implemented to a single frame. You are able now to represent time that is needed for convolution operation applied by TensorFlow class. Code that we ran in this lecture you can modify and apply to your own project. Use this code as template, implement needed modifications and apply it to any other project you have. Do you want to train DeepCNN model? Then join the course! Find the link below this video. You will be able to design your own DeepCNN model for classification tasks, train and test this model on image and in real time by camera. Build your own classification report and analyze confusion matrix. Click the link below to start now. Thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you soon in the next lectures.